Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today the question is, what is female orgasmic disorder? Now this is the disorder where two symptoms are present almost all or all the time when there's an occasion of sexual activity. According to DSM, 75% to 100% of the time when there's an occasion of sexual activity. So the two symptoms would be a delay in frequency or absence of an orgasm altogether or a reduction in the intensity of an orgasm. The DSM says 10% of women never orgasm. Why don't they qualify? 10% of women never have an orgasm in their lifetime. And they don't qualify necessarily for this diagnosis because this diagnosis requires clinically significant distress in addition to those other criteria. What is the prevalence of this disorder? We don't know a lot about the prevalence of this disorder and research indicates a lot of different figures. According to DSM, it's anywhere from 10% of women to 42% of women would have this disorder. What are the specifiers for the disorder? So female orgasmic disorder has a few specifiers. Uh, first, we'll start with lifelong and acquired. So the lifelong specifier means that the disturbance was present since the beginning of sexual activity. And acquired means that there was a period of time where there was relatively normal sexual activity and then the disturbance was present. Then moving on to the next specifiers, general and situational. With general, the disturbance is not limited to certain stimulation, situations, or partners. With situational, it only occurs with certain stimulation, situation, and partners. Then there's another specifier, never experienced an orgasm under any situation. Isn't this the same thing as low drive? It may seem like it's similar to low drive, but there's actually another disorder characterized by low drive and other similar symptoms, and that's female sexual interest arousal disorder. Are there comorbid disorders associated with female orgasmic disorder? Yes, uh, actually major depressive disorder is comorbid with female orgasmic disorder, and there are a number of medical issues that are also comorbid. Can limited experience play a role, meaning monogamy? Yes, I think that's why we have the two specifiers, generalized and situational. So that does give us some information. If, if the disturbance is situational, the disorder is situational, there's a possibility that another partner, other experiences, the symptoms may not be present. With generalized, then multiple situations have occurred and the disturbance has still been there. So that could indicate it's a little bit more serious of a condition, but we really don't know because really what situational means is there's limited experience. Should partners be involved in treatment? I think so. I think this is a disorder where individual treatment makes sense, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy or some other talk therapy, but also at some point it makes sense to bring in the partner and talk through what could be leading to the symptoms of this disorder. This sounds like it could be embarrassing or uncomfortable. What if someone's reluctant to talk about it? Sure, I can certainly understand this. With a lot of mental health disorders, unfortunately, there's a stigma. And particularly with the disorder about such a personal topic, it wouldn't necessarily be comfortable to come in and talk about it right away. So I would suggest in a situation like this, get to know your mental health clinician, maybe talk about what area of your life is being affected and kind of build that comfort level, and then try to open up a discussion. Uh, mental health clinicians are pretty understanding and we hear a lot of different information. It's very hard to surprise us. Remember, with this illness, it does cause clinically significant distress, so it's important to be treated and try to improve your life if it's bothering you.